A new date for stacking of the Artemis 1 core stage, completion of the forward join for the Artemis 2 core stage, and an engine section to contain the power of four mighty RS-25s on Artemis 3. All that and more on today's Space Launch System Rundown. On May 25th, NASA's Associate Administrator for Human Exploration and Operations, Kathy Luters, announced that the stacking of the Artemis 1 core stage onto the mobile launcher platform will occur next week, sometime between May 30th and June 5th. The core stage for Artemis 1 will be joining the two five-segment solid rocket boosters already stacked onto the pad a few months prior. After this, the launch vehicle stage adapter currently residing in the VAB with the core stage and SRBs will then be stacked atop the rocket. This will be followed closely by the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage and Orion Stage Adapter. And finally, stacking of the SLS rocket is expected to be finished in early to mid-July upon stacking of the Orion spacecraft. In addition to this, Kathy has also stated that NASA is still aiming for a November launch, but I'll take a Christmas present. SLS is looking very good for launch sometime this year. Next up in the news, the forward join for the Artemis II core stage has been completed. The forward join began on March 19th when the inner tank, a cylindrical structure designed to contain the thrust loads of the SRBs and separate the core stage's two propellant tanks, was installed into cell D at the Michoud assembly facility. After this, on April 28th, the liquid oxygen tank was lowered into cell D and stacked atop the inner tank. And recently, on May 24th, the forward skirt, a cylindrical ring that sits atop the liquid oxygen tank and houses all of SLS's avionics, was stacked on top of the other two core stage structures completing the first major join of the Artemis II core stage. This whole process took 66 days or around two months. And while that may seem like quite a lot of time, this actually represents a 30% increase in speed from the previous forward join of the Artemis I core stage, which took 95 days or a little over three months. In the near future, the forward join will be removed from cell D and placed on its side in order to be ready for the next major join, which will be connecting it to the large hydrogen tank. Earlier this year, engineers at NASA's Michoud Assembly Facility made huge progress toward the launch of Artemis III, the mission to land the first woman and next man on the surface of the moon. They did this with the welding together of the engine section for the Artemis III SLS core stage. The engine section is the most complex piece of hardware in the entire core stage. It is designed to channel the thrust of four RS-25 engines as well as feed propellant to all of them. Completion of the barrel section of this core stage component marks a huge milestone for this rocket as this would normally be the first core stage component to be produced. However, this core stage is way ahead of schedule thanks to the fact that this core stage's hydrogen tank has already been completed as well. The hydrogen tank was finished all the way back in 2016 and was scheduled to fly on Exploration Mission 1. However, NASA had Boeing shelve the tank due to welding issues and create a new one. This contributed in some part to the initial delays of the first SLS flight, but in turn, after fixing the welds to NASA's standards, this tank is now contributing to the third launch being well ahead of schedule. And now, with welding completion of the core stage engine section barrel, two of the five major core stage components are already well underway. Along with work on the Artemis III engine section, engineers at Michoud have hit another major milestone, the welding together of the Exploration Upper Stage Weld Confidence Article. While not quite the same as the structural test article or flight article, the Exploration Upper Stage Weld Confidence article is certainly important in its own right. Teams at Michoud will use this weld confidence article to verify welding procedures, interfaces between tooling and hardware, and the structural integrity of welds. Testing the EUS weld confidence article will help engineers and technicians validate the welding parameters for manufacturing hardware for the structural test article as well as the first flight article. The first exploration upper stage is scheduled to be finished around late 2023, early 2024, where it will be shipped to the Senate Space Center to undergo its own green run testing, before being shipped to the Kennedy Space Center for launch on Artemis IV. And finally, engineers at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center have recently completed the welding for Artemis II's launch vehicle stage adapter. This conical adapter is designed to connect the 27.6 foot wide core stage to the 16 foot wide interim cryogenic propulsion stage, which is also well into production. In the near future, this adapter will receive its iconic orange color when engineers spray it with the spray on foam insulation. Artemis 2 is currently scheduled for launch in 2023, where it will become the first mission to send astronauts to the moon since Apollo 17 in 1972. But wait, there's more! Just in today, it was revealed that the SLS Block 1B's first payload will be the IHAB module for the Lunar Gateway. 
I have Will Riot atop the SLS Block 1B as a co-manifested payload with the Orion spacecraft on the Artemis 4 mission to the moon. Orion will be used to provide the module with essential guidance and navigation in the deep space environment as well as inserting it into the near rectilinear HALO orbit for docking with the first two modules, HALO and PPE, sent up a few years prior. This is but one of many future SLS Block 1B launches that will be used to construct the Lunar Gateway. That's all for today, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you like the content, and don't forget to ring the notification bell to be notified of future videos. This has been your Space Launch System Rundown.